Hey all welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren. Today we're going to do reverse sear ribeyes versus sous vide ribeyes. So everybody always wants to know what's better, reverse sear or sous vide. We're going to find out today. So I'll be right back. <music> All right, guys, kind of this is going to be a really simple test. I have these ribeyes that I cut up from the uh, uh, prime rib roast video that I've well, I card here above showed when I showed you how to cut these up in the steaks when there were such good deals on the prime rib roasts and, and rib roasts over the holidays. So these have been in the freezer. I did season them before I put them in the freezer, so they do have some seasoning on them. It was just my salt, pepper, garlic, but I'm going to use a little bit of my uh, steak rub that I use which has a little bit of coffee salt pepper garlic onion powder and a little coffee espresso coffee um, I'm gonna season these all the same and two of these I'm gonna put in the sous vide bath and one of them one and a half because we got one and a half steaks here we're gonna do the reverse sear on which means we're going to cook it first on the grill uh, on a lower temperature and then we're going to sear it after the fact and we'll sear these both at the same time so first these are going to go in the sous vide bath at 131 we're going to put them in there for about three hours i already have my anova nano uh, heating the water up which is almost there so and what i'm going to do with this these two pieces here is let them sit in the refrigerator while those are cooking in the sous vide with the rub on them so they can actually um, do a little bit of a dry brine while they're uh, waiting for these to get done in the sous vide. So I'm going to go ahead and bag these two up and put this in the refrigerator. But uh, first of all, let me just put a little seasoning on here. Like I said, this is my, I'll put my coffee um, steak rub in the description below just so you guys can know what it is. But this is really a different and a really good rub for steaks that coffee really brings out the, the beefiness of the steaks so I'm gonna put just a little bit like I said these were seasoned before they were frozen so there is some seasoning on it already but I'm just gonna put a little bit of this let's give it a little bit more of that salt pepper garlic onion and the um, espresso coffee is gonna bring out really good flavors to this meat so that's it I'm gonna just put a little bit on there I'm going to get these two bagged up and this one's going to go in the refrigerator until we're ready to sear them up. I'll be right back. guys I'm going to show you how we're going to set this up today on the Kamado Joe Classic 2. The uh, Kamado Joe uh, charcoal basket that's an accessory for these actually has a divider in it so you can actually set up the fire on one side of the basket which is really great for this type of cook because we're going to get the fire on, on the uh, left side here and we're going to cook really slow like at a 225 to 250 initially so we're going to set up our uh, heat deflectors uh, on the right side, but this charcoal basket lets us have a fire just exactly on one side of the of the grill. So that's going to work out really great. For While this is still lighting, guys, I was showing you how I got it set up. I got my heat deflector on this side here so that we can keep this side rather cool. Got my this grate up higher, so we're going to do our reverse sear to start it out. And then I got the grate lower all the way down right over the flames for when we're going to do our searing. So, all right, I'm going to get this set up to where we can uh, do some low and slow cooking for the reverse sear. And I'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys, I got my Kamado Joe Classic 2 just up past 200 degrees. And I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, ribeye on. I'll put it right here on this indirect side. And then what we're going to do, I'm just going to kind of put them close here so that keep them both the same temp. 
I'm going to use my uh, instant read thermometer to monitor the uh, internal temp of this because I don't want it to go past 129. So I'm going to let this cook on here for about 45 minutes to an hour until that temperature gets up to about 129 to 128 or so internal. All right, guys, it's been on here for a little bit. Let me kind of check the internal temp here. Looks like we're pushing right about 127, 126, 127, right in between there on the bigger one here. Yeah, and we're right at about 129 on the smaller piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and move these off. Got a nice little mahogany on there. I did not use any smoking wood on this. I didn't really want to have any uh, smoke flavor to these because I'm really just, uh, I don't want to compare a smoked steak to just a sous vide and seared steak. I want it to pretty much be even. So I'm going to let this get up hot. We're going to let this other steak here, this um, seared steak, just kind of sit here for a minute and rest while this gets up to hot. It's up to 500. It, should, it shouldn't take it very long to get hot. So, And that's going to give me some time to pull the other steaks out of the sous vide bath and get them ready. So I'll be right back. All right, guys. While the reverse seared steaks are resting, I pulled the uh, sous vide steaks out of the sous vide bath and we got them all patted down. We're going to put just a little bit more of the seasoning, my steak seasoning, on, these, on both uh, of these steaks just so that we can have a nice uh, good coverage of that. All right, and we're gonna get these both out to sear in just a second. Don't know if you guys can see that, but it's up over 400, almost 450 already. Um, and that's just from this uh, dome temperature, but that fire is hot. And I'm actually gonna move you over the side a little bit so I can have better access to the fire. And I'm going to put a sous vide one on first. You can hear that sizzle as soon as it hits. Another sous vide one on. Put one of the reverse sears on. And my little piece of reverse sear. Alright, and we're going to sear these for about a minute or so on each side. Close that up. I might even just take this top piece off just so we can get a little bit hotter. See how that works. That'll let that uh, airflow push right through the top <coughs> and give that a chimney effect. Just wanted to show you this, guys. <laughs> I, I haven't had it down there for 30 seconds yet, and you can see the flames coming out of the top of the Kamado Joe. So I'm going to go ahead and flip these over. It looks like they're getting seared pretty good. And it hasn't even been a minute yet. It's that fat melt in there. And we don't want to overcook these, so we're just wanting to sear them. Give that another minute and we'll be back. Alright guys, there you go. Can you tell which one is which? I don't know. Here's your reverse sear, and here's your sous vide. The, uh, you can definitely tell the reverse sear has a little bit more color to it because it was cooking at a higher temperature. So you can definitely tell that it did have a little bit of overcooking to it because of that. But I'm going to go ahead and cut these right in the middle so we can see. How they turned out and that's definitely still medium rare still definitely medium rare you can see that but um, you can see it does have a little bit of a gray area there I cut this one right in half as well and you can tell this one's a little bit actually a little bit more medium rare it's a little bit more juicy a little bit less of that gray area but what we're kind of going to look and see is if 
which one is more tender at first I want to get a kind of picture of that see that see how that looks how does that look so I'm gonna take a taste okay I'm gonna get a taste right here of the reverse sear it is nice and juicy looking really tastes the salt and pepper garlic it's very good let's go with the sous vide now one thing I can tell just from cutting this was a little bit tougher to cut through than the sous vide one so that three hours in the sous vide bath at 131 tenderize that tell just by cutting it but let me just get a close-up on that so you can see it's medium rare definitely more tender both of them good. Both of them have good flavor. Um, searing it really hot helps out with that. But I would say the CV gets just a little bit more of an edge than the reverse sear. They're both very good. If I would have put some smoking wood on for the reverse sear, it may have uh, tipped it over the top from having a more smoky flavor. But going head to head, just sear to sear without any kind of additional smoke. I would say the sous vide has just a little bit more tenderness to it than the reverse sear. And you can tell that you know it's more medium rare from end to end. But there you go guys. Both are great. Both are good methods. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Make sure you uh, check out all our other videos that I posted up on top here in the uh, in the cards and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.